Hello, and welcome to Retro Tech Repair. Today we're going to be repairing a classic tabletop arcade game from the 1980s. So let's get started. I do try and reuse the boxes, so I'm always a bit disappointed when I tear one like that. I'm conscious I don't want to damage what might be inside here. There we go. Ah! Well. I'm going to have to abandon this box. But I'm excited to see this one. It is, it looks in quite a nice shape as well. It's a red front scramble, Grandstad scramble game. Uh, seems again to be in reasonable used condition. Uh, some marks on there, I don't know if that's dirt or glue or something. But Grandstand scramble, wonderful. I'm looking forward to fixing that. Hello, today we're going to be looking at another tabletop game from Grandstand. This time a scramble. It doesn't seem to be in too bad condition. Some uh, dirt or marks on the on the play area. Obviously some scratches on the screen. But it does have the battery cover. And the battery compartment's got maybe a little bit of surface corrosion there. But it's really not in, in bad shape at all. Probably just clean that up. Um, we'll take a look at the eBay listing. And see what, uh, see what the seller had to say about it. So here is the listing. It is Groundstand Scramble, faulty. And the item description, won't turn on, battery compartment is clean. Well, battery compartment isn't too clean, uh, but it's okay. Uh, but I did only pay five pounds plus 295 shipping. So uh, I think a good price. Uh, let's see if, I can, uh, see if I can fix it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get this knob off the joystick here and I have learned from experience that this is actually a sticker over a little screw so what I want to try and do is get in here and just lift that up I suppose if you were grandstand or Tommy or whomever made this I'm not sure then if you ever needed to repair these you would have more of these stickers but I do not only have one so I have to take good care of that all right, so there's a little screw in there. See if I can get a small screwdriver that will get in there. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's a good start. I suppose what I should have done is, I should have tried it. So let's try it. Done. This is my third ever YouTube video, and oops, that was lively, huh? Third ever YouTube video. I'm trying different kind of editorial styles. I don't seem to be very good at some aspects of it, uh, but I seem to be getting better at repairing these machines. And in fact, uh, yeah, it is. It is completely dead. I should mention I don't really have any special skills or knowledge, so please don't take what I am giving to be advice in any way. It's just me going about things in the way I go about things and sharing my thought processes as I do that. So let's go ahead and get this unfastened. Right. 
as I take these screws out, I'm checking to see if they're all the same size. In this machine, they have been so far. I did a Tommy Munchman in my first video. They were all the same size in that too, but I did an Astro Wars in my second video and that had different sizes. Do be a little bit careful when you get different sizes that you don't accidentally screw something in, crack a boss or something like that. I learned a little trick for these plastic screws that when you are fastening them up you should rewind a little first and then put them in. So just turn back until they catch the thread and then put them in and that way uh, you don't strip out the boss because they're uh, obviously a screw into soft, fairly, fairly soft plastic. Well, this is interesting. I had commented, I think, in my one of my other videos that electrolytic capacitors were always suspect, and I see straight away that we have an electrolytic capacitor here, which has, uh, you can see that or not, but it has ex kind of exploded. Let's see if I can focus that any better. Uh, swollen and you can even see where it's expelled its contents onto the onto the plastic case there. In my other repairs, this power transistor has been suspect. So I think we'll take a look at that too and uh, see if, if that could be a problem. My limited experience has been that it's worth removing the electronics from the plastics to properly troubleshoot and repair. These screws are actually shorter than the others, so we'll put those separately over there. solder our battery wires here. Okay, and I'm going to take a look now at um, Go test that transistor because it's been so troublesome in the others. I'm going to see if I have a capacitor to match those and uh, we'll see about maybe replacing these capacitors too. So I took a look at the values on this electrolytic capacitor and I don't know if the camera will focus on that. Probably not, but it is a uh, 300, 330 microfarad 10 volt electrolytic capacitor. To my kit of capacitors, I have a 330 microfarad cap in there. It's 25 volts, not uh, not the 10 volts, but that's fine because a capacitor rating on electrolytic is a maximum. So as long as you have a maximum, as long as you have a maximum voltage that for the replacement part, which is higher than the original one or the same as the original one, that should be just fine. Um, I also went in and took a look at this transistor. This is the transistor which I have found to be troublesome in the other devices that I looked at. It's a D882. And just from my experience that I have picked up doing these YouTube videos, I know that on a diode test, just position that there so we can see. On a diode test, this is an NPN transistor, and that P is the base, and that's pin one. So if I go on here, 
I should see 0.6 of a volt drop to the other two pins. And I see a zero and an open circuit. I just switch those around again, a zero and an open circuit. So I'm deeply suspicious of this, of this transistor also. Uh, but of course it's here still in circuit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and replace it. And then I'm going to take this out and test it. These are electrolytic capacitors are polarity sensitive. I want to leave myself enough room to lay it down because it's it was laid down in the original. So something like that. So our cap changed. Now I need to take out this transistor. So now we have this transistor out of circuit, we can test it more convincingly. In this package, bases on this pin, that would be the P, since it's an NPN transistor. And then let's see if we have a voltage drop. So it seems to be shorted between the base and the collector and open circuit to the emitter. This is a D882. So I know that I have one of these because I bought a pack of them. This also was laid down. I use only really a basic tool set for these. Don't have any special equipment. Okay. So now we've replaced our power transistor and we've replaced our exploding capacitor. So I think I'm going to hook this up now to a power source and see if it is working. I'm just out of camera here, I have a bench power supply set to about six volts. So let's switch it on and see. Okay, let's plug it in, switch it on and see. Excellent. Good. Well, it seems to work. So we are now going to switch off. I'm going to reassemble this. And we have to take the opportunity to clean up the case as well. 
So here we have the rest of our scramble parts uh, all cleaned up as best as I could. This is a, a repair video, not a restoration video, but I, I cleaned it up. I salvaged a couple of parts from another, another scramble that I had. Uh, the one that we were looking at had some damage on this corner and also some corrosion on the battery contacts. The scramble that I stole those parts from, uh, the battery contacts part, and, uh, and this was in much worse condition. I think I am still going to repair that in a subsequent video, but I wanted this to be the best that it could be. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this now. You don't need me to talk, and I'm just gonna fast forward this through this because you've seen some of this before. Okay, so here we have our now fully working scramble. As we have seen before with these VFD displays, there's some flicker that shows up on the camera, but in actual fact, it's not visible on the display. So all the buttons seem to work. Down, left and right, missile, and oh, that was bomb. That's probably why it didn't kill people. There we go, bomb and missile. Nice bright display. So happy with that, really. Looks good.